Hi, I made it. Okie doke. <laughs> uh. Freaky door. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Dick, John, and Barb are on. We have Will Reisig, recorder, Hank Banesh, recorder as well, and then Bill Terry, uh, looks like Hank, uh, Pat Kelly, Barbara Terrio, um, and Julie Atwell. Okay, so I guess uh, Julie and Julie. Uh, Julie Atwell is on. And I, Julie Hoyt, I imagine, will be calling on. Calling in. Okay, well. And Emily Benson is on as well. We have everybody that needs to be here. So yes. I would call the September 22nd Selectman's meeting to order by Zoom. And uh, the first thing is to approve the minutes of our last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. And I will second that motion. Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Dick Bennett, yes. All right, the next item I have is the right of way at Vista Way, which is pending. As I understand it, we're still um, waiting. I'm sorry, one second, Dick. Did we have to approve the minutes for the non public? Oh, yes, we do. Thank um, you. And uh, whether to seal them or not. I would take a motion on approving. The minutes of the non-public. I will make a motion to approve those and just as an FYI the date on the agenda should be uh, September 15th 2020. Right. Okay. <laughs> I will second. Is there any need to is I, I missed the end of it so I, I don't know if there's any need to seal the minutes. I don't remember I wasn't there for discussion on that. Well we'll accept them. Uh, Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John? Uh, I abstain because I wasn't, I missed it. And I'll vote yes. Uh, whether we need to seal them, I think that we're done. It's It was uh, mm -hmm. a financial discussion, so I don't see any reason to uh, uh, seal the minutes because the uh, the deal is done. Right. Okay. So those minutes will be available if anybody cared to check on us. Uh, so the next item is the right of way at Vista Way, which is pending. Um, as I understand it, we're still waiting. Uh, for some information or uh, documents to come in, and we have not heard uh, back recently about that. So the next item is uh, the expanded seating at yesterday's and the Thompson House. 
I haven't heard any complaints. I haven't seen any problems. I think it's been successful mm -hmm. for uh, both establishments. And uh, as I understand it, yesterday's is going to have a termination in October, middle October, probably shortly after uh, Columbus Day weekend. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from Thompson House, but uh, for yesterday's, I don't think we'll have to monitor after the 15th of October. If that, does, if that changes, I'll let everybody know. Is there uh, any reason not to continue their expanded seating? I have not. Any reason? No. That's great. I think it's worked out for them. I agree. Okay, the next item is the uh, Jackson Falls Committee update. Um, I know Barbara Terrio is on the line, so let me just see if I can. Barbara, can you unmute your phone? Hang on a second. Barbara, are you on? Cario, EP? Star, star six, you can unmute it. I'm here. I'm okay. here. <laughs> Sorry, I had to pull off the road <laughs> to <laughs> unmute myself. Um, we have, um, after our last meeting, I'm just really happy to say that we've, um, we have added members to uh, the original committee. Um, actually, there are four members of the conservation um, committee that are um, now on the committee and a couple more um, local residents. We are brainstorming right now about how to how to get the we have um, a questionnaire actually ready to go out to people but we we're, we're hesitating to do it through um, the e-news because e-news anybody can get Jackson e-news and to have it out there we we want people our residents or um, or um, landowners here in Jackson to be the ones that are responding to the actual um, survey. So we have um, pretty much thought that the best way to do it would be for the voting list because these are people who are registered voters in Jackson, therefore they must be residents or they must be landowners. So we are just now looking into what it might cost to do that. Uh, we're thinking that if we can get emails on the list, we could actually do it online and have them go to a certain code to be able to get into it. But we'd also be having um, a paper one for those members of our um, of our village and, and town that are not tech savvy and would not do something on online. So that's pretty much where we are right now. Um, we have ha also had some correspondence through um, Emily with um, the Forest Service and possible funding that there may be for such a survey. So that's what those are. Those are all the things that we've got going on right now. That's great. I'm glad you had such an uptick in participation too. And if you want, when you get the cost for the mailing estimated, just um, Give that let me know or something and reach out to me and then we can discuss on how to get that covered or you know what how much it's going to cost and what we need to do perfect that'd be great barbara thank you can i just well, my only question oh, go ahead um this is emily i'll come back um that was um the possible funding was actually through through the park service just okay. Get that oh, okay sorry um, that's okay <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so that that was my my question is: If you do just the voters, you're not going to get the landowners because they are not necessarily voters. We want the voters, <laughs> right? But the landowners have a stake in it too. I mean, um, I I think that if we start, we have to start with those people that are they do have they are taxpayers. But they're they're not necessarily up here, and um, and I'm, I, I could possibly are not even aware of the um, 
of what happened this summer. And, um, and, and for us as taxpayers and the people in, in the village as taxpayers and the voting populace in, in Jackson, not to have the right to use their, what belongs to them is why we're sort of going with the voting list. Um, because those are, those are people that are here all the time. So summer residents won't have a say. Um, well, I, I imagine they would, but we have to start somewhere, John. If we have all the information to get those landowners, yes, absolutely, we'll reach out to them as well. The one thing we wanted was just not, there are some landowners that are also Airbnb owners. And um, so there are owners that do not vote in Jackson, but they're not even in Jackson. And as the selectmen themselves have admitted, we don't know who half of them are. So um, I, I don't. I, I get it's well worth a discussion of um, of us, you know, expanding a little bit. But at the moment, the one thing we wanted to focus on is the people that are going to be here to vote in March. I, I think it might be <laughs> worthy to put a, just a yes or no question or um, some kind of a checkbox that says, "Are you a full time resident?" Um, versus someone that's just a registered voter, and then maybe we can determine who we're missing out of that population. You know, maybe maybe make that uh, just a yes or no question or uh, something on the survey that would help delineate who you're talking to. Because I that hear is that actually that is one of the questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we're, 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 what we're trying to do is there enough? If we did that right on, you know, right on um, on the Jackson E News. Who knows who would be hearing from? Right. And so that's why we're trying to get it to um, residents and landowners. So we really have to be careful who we're reaching out to, if you know what I'm saying. There could be people from North Conway who are, are you know, are going to take that survey. Right. Yeah, we, we were, just learned more that E! News goes very far and wide. So it wasn't going to be as effective as we thought. Yeah. But that's certainly, we, I'm certainly, that's up for discussion, John, and we'll do it again at our next update as to what, uh, what's for, foremost on our minds is being able to get this out as soon as possible while this is still raw in everybody's craw. <laughs> and, um, and, and that's one of the reasons we don't want to, too abruptly, but we we do want to seriously look into it. All right. Well, thank you, Barbara. I'm really pleased that uh, you've gotten some members for the from the Conservation Commission. I think that working closely with them will be very productive. Yeah, yeah, that's that was really great, and and they were so so eager to come forth too, which was really great. It was wonderful. Good. All right. Well, it was good to hear from a committee dealing with the problems at Jackson Falls. We're going to get to the end of it. Um, my next agenda item is a cemetery lot agreement. Uh, Dean and Nancy Davis will be purchasing a lot 188 at the Dundee Cemetery. I don't know that we have to vote on that. Uh, Julie Atwell, do we have to vote on the cemetery? Julie, Julie, are you there? Um, Dick, this is Julie Hoyt. Uh, yes, you do. You have to make a motion to sign the um, lot agreement. Okay. I'll make a motion to um, accept the cemetery lot agreement for Dean and Nancy Davis. I'll second. 
Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Dick Bennett, yes. Am I unmuted now? Yes. All right. <laughs> I hope they don't okay. use it for a while. True. Agreed, Dick. <laughs> Good to plan ahead, but. Okay, our next item is, oh, a uh, withdrawal from the trust funds. Dear trustees, the Board of Selectmen are requesting the following withdrawals from the trust funds as indicated below. $141,321 from the Highway Truck Capital Reserve Fund 0048. See the attached uh, invoice from McDavid Trucks. Can I get a, that's for the new highway truck. Uh, can I get a motion hey, on it? Dick, can you just say yeah. when that was invoice was dated? The invoice is dated 15 September. 2020. And that's per the uh, agreement that we made back a while ago to purchase that truck. It's just yes. coming due. I'll make a motion to approve the withdrawal for the new highway truck to McDavitt for the 100,000 plus. I didn't get the full amount, sorry. 141,321 dollars. 141,321 to McDavitt. That's it. I will second. Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Dick Bennett, yes. Okay. I hope they're happy with that truck. I do too. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're going to try to schedule hours for the. Uh, town clerk and the select office and that will be uh, at the windows so you're not coming inside the building but it'll be available during normal working hours remotely Monday through Thursday 9 to 3 and Friday 9 to 12 available walk up windows hours with no appointment will be tuesday and wednesday oh tuesday wednesday thursday nine till one and i just want to also say that if people need to access anything in the office either through the select office the town office the clerk's office they have been very very accessible and um uh, just flexible as far as making sure that people get what they need in the in the office if they need to. So I, you know, encourage people to still phone, email if anything is needed. Okay, so I would uh, entertain a motion on the window hours. I'll make a motion to approve the window hours for the select office and the um, town clerk's office. I will second. Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Dick Bennett, yes. So the, just to go over it again, uh, available uh, during all business hours remotely monday through thursday nine to three and fridays nine to twelve available as a walk-up with no appointment tuesday wednesday thursday nine to one and you can also make an appointment if uh there are files you need to see or whatever comes up. So anyway, they're available um, and they're obviously working 
every day, all day. So town business will go on. Okay, the next it has, been, it has been going on too. <laughs> and it has been going on. Absolutely. Uh, my next item is uh, doublehead trail parking. Uh, the I think the particular interest is at the entrance to the South Doublehead Trail where people are still parking in the road and not using the uh, parking lot that was created by the Forest Service. So we're thinking of putting in signage that would direct people to not park on the road, but to uh, go ahead down to the parking that the Forest Service created. I don't think that should be a hardship because if you're going to hike up South Doublehead, you don't need to park right in front of the trailhead. You're off for a hike anyway, so hike up the road from the parking lot and uh, access the South Doublehead Trail. Pat, are you there to uh, discuss that? I am here. Have I stated it about as you see it? I uh, yeah. Um, John Allen had asked me to get a sign made. I got the sign made. Um, my question would be: Do we, you know, do we want no parking signs up there on both sides of the road? They're only on one side now. Um, I oh. haven't had any personal issues up there with people parking. Um, I know I think there's some neighborhood issues, but I haven't had anybody parking there that's ever blocked the road or anything that I've witnessed. But, um, but yeah, it would seem like they should be able to, I think those trails connect, I think, don't they? No, they're independent, but they, oh, they have are. to oh. access it. Gotcha. They connect at the top. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Two different trails. Okay. Yeah. Stay for a while yep. and see how it works out before we add more signage. I mean, I know we have I to agree. add signs, but it'd be nice if we could just suggest that they park in the available parking lot and see how that works. Okay. That sounds good to me. I have a nice uh, sign that is asking people nicely to park down at the bottom of the hill. So um, I will hold off on no parking signs until you guys direct me to do that. We'll just keep Thanks, the Pat. we'll keep the ones that are up on um, John Piakwich's side. We'll keep those there, obviously, and uh, we'll we'll get the other sign and and see how that works. Thank you. Sounds good to me. Awesome. John, you're, John Allen, you're happy with it. I'm pleased as punch. Good. Barbara? Sounds good to me. Okay. Our next, oh, okay. Somebody's beeping me. Pat's uh, muting his phone. <laughs> we have, uh, some guidance on uh, travel and mask policies from uh, Primax. And I, as, I, as Barbara, have you had a chance to look over the recommendations? Yeah, I did. I, I think they're sound and level they let allow for consistency and john did you get a chance to look over them uh only briefly i did not look at them very long though i did not look at details unfortunately well i can go through it um you know do you have a fever have you traveled outside right. New Hampshire, Mass, uh, Maine, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont. Um, I think it's, they're just the guidelines that we can uh, put.
put in place to kind of try to keep everybody safe. I mean, we just hit the 200,000 death mark in the country, and uh, we're certainly not slowing down. So I think that everything we can put in place that uh, keeps, you know, our employees safe, keep everybody safe. And I, I think it'd be important to uh, implement it for our town employees and then uh, hope that uh, town residents would adhere to similar guidelines. Well, that was my question. Do we want to make this a requirement for town employees to follow, to wear masks in in uh, when they're on property that's owned by the town of Jackson or on duty yeah yeah and Emily I know you're on the call too if you want to speak to this I guess but yeah I'm, uh, I'm in favor of it I I've sent sent some information to you all um, was looking at some additional I have not seen exactly what Primex sent um but it does sound like some pretty standard screening protocols i mean if employees are able to maintain six foot distancing from people i don't see that a mask needs to be required if you're on a jackson town property and there's no one around you mm -hmm. or people are further than six feet um i don't think it's necessary to have a mask um there's some great mask information that um, just sort of general information through the CDC, you know, how to protect yourself and others. Um, again, that combination of masks, six foot distancing, being outside, washing your hands, um, making sure that everyone's aware of that. Um, I sat down with Jay just this afternoon and started to look at sort of reviewing some of the um, protocols that were going on at the fire department. Um, they already have part of their equipment, you know, that they use um, when they're responding to calls that acts in the same way that, that the mask does. It's definitely a recommendation that firefighters not have cloth masks on them um, when they're going to a fire because you've got enough equipment um, that acts in the same way. So I think the big thing is, is that if people are traveling out of New England, um, to, to monitor their symptoms. And mm -hmm. we now have four infrared thermometers in town. Um, if someone's coming into the town offices, you know, we're, to Dick's point, we want to maintain the health and safety of, mm -hmm. of everybody in town. And um, being cognizant to that when you're inside, you know, put the mask on if you're going to be in, be in the town offices, um, especially in close proximity to others. So. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, if there are meetings that um, that are taking place where there are multiple town employees in one of the buildings, for example, at the fire meetings or the highway meetings, do you feel like they should be masking if there's 10 people in the room? I mean, I doubt well, they should be apart. <laughs> I mean, that's, a th you know, trying to be spread apart is, is the best thing. Um, and being aware of you know, the risk that you have put yourself in. Um, I'll tend to mask up if I'm going to see my mother mm -hmm. <laughs> because right. you know, um, using some of that um, concern, if you have your own health conditions to be aware of, others who you know are in, um, who might be in, you know, in higher risk categories. So obviously if we could all be outside, that would be optimum, but um, inside just keeping those different things aware of. and don't go to those meetings if you are showing symptoms. If there's any concern, um, I've been hearing great reports from Memorial Hospital's COVID testing, asymptomatic testing, mm -hmm. set up an appointment, go down, get the test, the turnaround with the results seems to be really almost within 24 hours or so. Yeah, definitely is. So, um, so that's where, and so I, I don't know specifically, again, what Primex is, um, you know, if they have those even more re recommendations, but um, I was just looking at CDC guidelines for EMS personnel as well, and I can um, send that along. But, um, you know, they're, again, cleaning equipment at the firehouse. I haven't been in touch with 
Chris Pearley in terms of Chief Pearley, how they're doing things there. But um, that's my thought on it right now. Well, I think we could implement uh, for town employees, if you're going out of New England and uh, I've been out of New England, you come back and uh, you sell quarantine. I mean, that I think that's a fair request. I, I know I'm using a mask uh, when I have help coming in on a project I'm doing and it's not convenient but we're doing it and uh, you know, it, it, it can be done. I have no idea what our uh, percentages are of uh, safety, but uh, I, I'm doing it anyway. So, you know, I, I understand the uh, inconvenience of it, but uh, I still think it's important. Well, you do have to be very then thinking about staff who's able to continue to work remotely versus staff that cannot work remotely with self working. I mean, in terms of are they paid for that time if they're not able to come? Yeah, I and I think this gets into a much deeper policy if we want to get into a written policy. So uh, exactly. another company that I've been working with has they use the New York Times. Um, there's a, a link to the New York Times list that's updated by county, by state. Mm -hmm. And it's the number of cases per 100,000 employees, or, or not employees, a uh, uh, population. So there's guidelines that you can use for what is a hot spot or a hot area. And, and I think that we, you know, vacations are going to come and go for people, but I think that we need to have the utmost of safety in the office. We do ma wear masks when we're in the office together because the office is small. I think that town employees should be cognizant of wearing them. Like you said, maybe not outdoors or if you're in a building alone, but I think that if there are meetings that are held where it's not possible to maintain a good distance, then it should be it should be mandatory to wear masks in my opinion i'm you know if we want to write a policy for town employees i think we should do that but um there are standards that we can look at or guidelines that we can look at through new york times or cdc or yeah i shared it to a website too you look at yeah mm -hmm. being able to look at the infection rates in those right. counties that people are going to and it's very to be able to tie it some to some uh -huh. data, so. Um, but again, I mean, you could once the policies are you know finalized at the fire department to be able to take that into account, um, put it all together. I'd be happy to sit down with one of you all, you know, and start looking at that. But I think you've got all the resources that are needed, and other towns, I'm sure, are doing it. So anything. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the first thing we do is to uh, get this Primex uh, screening questionnaire out on the uh, e news so that people had access to it. Um, probably distribute it to the uh, police, fire, highway, just so you. It keeps people thinking about it because I think that I, th I think the tendency might be to, well, we're doing well. New Hampshire does well. We're cruising along. Everybody's okay. Okay, you know, don't let down your guard. So let's put this uh, questionnaire, screening questionnaire, out, and uh, well, we'll talk about you know. Barb, I'm more than happy to talk with you about uh, a screening, I mean, a mask policy. Can I just clarify, though, putting it out on e news um, to let people know that they have to do this to come into I the. I have a sheet that we could just electronically punch in. That well, this is actually, Dick, this is really an internal employee document. It's not for the public. That's what I was thinking. Or, okay. This that is, was my impression yeah. this discussion was about internal employees. Right. This came to us because we're 
a subscriber to Primex for our uh, employees' insurance. It's still a good idea for anybody. I mean, if you read down it, there's nothing on there that doesn't apply to the general public also. So definitely, as I said, uh, get it out to the fire, police, highway, and the office. And then, uh, I don't know, uh, if you want to implement a mask policy, then we can talk about that right now. I mean, that's fine with me. Well, why don't I take a stab at putting it together? Because I probably have a, a pretty good template that I can use from other companies that I've worked with. And I can send that out to, um, to through the Julie's and we can look at it and make a decision. Excellent. And we can yeah. add the link on that for the New York Times or the CDC or whatever, too. Okay. And hold off on the form going through e-news. Yes. That's not necessary. Yeah, okay. and, uh, and uh, not, Dick, not to be um, mm -hmm. negative or anything, but boy, if everybody doesn't know the questions already about have you been <laughs> out of the state and right. you have sniffles and a cough or whatever, but... Uh, yeah, but it is nice to have a reminder once in a while, too, so. And certainly as the town office is open, don't come if you're yes. seeing those symptoms. Right, right. right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get something out for a draft. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Of course. Um, if, Dick, if I could just backtrack to the, um, the town truck that we just purchased. I yes. did want to, I did want to just, um, make mention that we did sell the old truck to the town of Lempster um, and we sold it for $30,000 that we'll be receiving the funds for. So um, we were pleased to be able to get a good amount of money for it. Pat uh, takes great care of the highway vehicles. So it was in good shape um, even for the age it's in. And the town of Lempster is thrilled to be getting a, a vehicle because they're not a uh, large town. So uh, we advertised it, and that was the um, that was the price we were able to get. And we did not get a lot of traffic on it, but it was nice to be able to sell that and put some money back in the bank. It's always good to take some money back in. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, one thing that isn't on our agenda, but I'd like to add, is the uh, drought. I mean, we've been getting drought warnings. I think people with dug wells are probably looking down their wells and going, where is the groundwater going? It's been really dry. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage people to be really cautious about campfires or backyard fires, fireworks. Um, just be really cautious. It's plenty dry out there mm -hmm. and, and no no fire permits are being issued no for, fire for permit firm. and uh you know your water use you should really monitor right now because mm -hmm. uh watering your lawn right now is probably not that important so anyway try to be aware of the drought now the fire permits in, in, include, um, you know, camp uh, home fires and and campfires and things like that, or is it is it just burning brush? I believe it's, it's just it's for, uh, brush burn, fires. Burn and, pits. Uh, well, it's burn pits too. It is burn pits. Isn't it, Julie? Hello. Hey, it's Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Um, you want me to make a comment on that? Please. Love it. So, yeah, fire permits are not being issued. Um, Kenny and I, Kenny, who's the forest warden, have been talking a lot about it. Um, the one problem we have had very recently, which we're working on, is some of the seasonal rentals, um, have still had we've gotten some complaints on some seasonal rentals that people because they're only here weekends they don't know might not know 
what the law is. So we've been trying to deal with that with some seasonal rentals and getting the word out that they got to have a fire permit if they can even get a permit. Um, so we've been dealing with that. Now, is that just for fire pits? Well, campfire, a campfire, whether you call it a campfire or a fire pit, um, okay. or yeah, that you got to have a permit for that right along with the people burning a brush file. Okay. So we have That's had- That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure it was clear because uh, yep. at the store the other day, some people were buying wood and I said, geez, you got to be really careful about the forest danger, forest fire yep. danger. And, and I just want to make sure it's clear to people that, you know, that burning outside was really not a good thing to do right now. Yep, no, that's correct. And like in campfires or fire rings or fire pits are, are need to have permits. Um, we did have a forest, well, we thought we had a forest fire last week um, up in the forest service up off of Iron Mountain. And we managed to, after two days worth of work and a helicopter ride, <laughs> We finally found it, which was a camp a campfire that probably sparked back up after who knows how many days or wow. um, which was on the edge of private property, right on the edge of the Forest Service land. So probably a lot of people saw a bunch of Forest Service firefighters here, ATVs here from the Forest Service and trailers. And actually, uh, I went up in the helicopter trying to locate it the day before they got here. So we did have that issue. So big, big thank you to Steve Keeney for coming out with the helicopter and helping us try to find it. Yeah, it must've been fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, yeah, it's, it's dry, it's dangerous. Um, they're actually tonight, we're doing some stuff with the forestry truck to hopefully prepare ourselves if we have any more issues. We also went to Bartlett for a, uh, recently for on the railroad tracks up by Arethusa Falls for our training, started the woods on fire. So we had to put our forestry truck up there on the railroad tracks to put the fire out. Super, thank you for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can I just chime in quick on that too? I think it that is some information that we should talk about on e-news. Um, Definitely. I can work with Jay on that. Yeah, we can uh, we can develop something and get it onto e-news. Yep, I can put that on my list here. I'll connect with you on that, Jay. Um, and Jay, we did put something out from Kenny yesterday regarding the um, no, you know, fire permits being given. Okay, on e news too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, then we probably don't need to then if you did that yesterday. I'll take oh, a look at it. Good. You guys need to um, read your e news. Is... <laughs> I guess we need to read. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's been a little busy lately. Oh, stop. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Jay. Yep. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you, Jay. Yep. All right. Uh, before we head into short term rentals, are there any other uh, items for us to discuss? Uh, on the transfer station, uh, Vicki. Uh, Garland and Don Miller and I met last Monday uh, up there to discuss some potential changes. Uh, Vicky was going to write up a little little uh, thing about you know what we talked about. I did. Julie forwarded it to me. I don't know if you guys get to see that yet. No, I don't think so. Okay. No. All right. That may be something we want to put on our agenda or try to get you know in touch with the Bartlett folks. This you know, maybe schedule a meeting. <laughs> I think we have one scheduled for October 1st. Is that right, Julie? Or that was what we we're trying to aim for? They were, yeah, they posed the question. They're waiting for everyone to answer. I'm fine with October 1st. Four o'clock, 10 one. Right, I just asked for uh, kind of a 
idea of what we're going to talk about. So Agenda, we can, yeah. Um, think about it ahead of time. Yeah, Julie just sent me the, the email that Vicki, you know, had written up a quick little slurb about what we talked about. So hopefully you get to read that and then let me know what you think. All right. Sounds good. I'll read it. <laughs> uh, okay, short-term rentals applications for approval. Um, is Kevin Bennett here yet? No. No, okay. So I guess there, um, I asked him to go through what he knew and if he had any uh, issues with any of them, uh, he should let us know. Now, uh, we have a resubmittal from Oregon, Kim and John, 62 Thornhill Road. Uh, I don't think there's any issue now with their uh with their advertising or their uh application right so, is uh, julie atwell there yes i'm here so do you uh do you have any issues with any of the applications that are on our agenda um i'm gonna let julie hoyt respond to that one absolutely Pass the buck. Julie Hoy. Hi. No, there are no no no, um, no issues with them. Everyone has uh, posted or ad advertised their um, houses correctly, so there's there's they're all good to go. Awesome. And do they they need a permit for each house? Is that correct? Yeah. Are you talking about the yes? Yes, they do for each house. Well, like Absolutely. Armstrong have two uh, applications, right. I guess. So they are applying for two yes. different addresses. Yes, they have two houses, right, the Armstrong. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Bill, did yeah. Bill Terry wanted to make a point. Can you unmute, unmute Bill? Yes, thank you. Sure. I, yeah. Um, just one comment, and, and that is regarding uh, the comments that we provided uh, for these applications. Uh, you'll note on two of them, we had uh, some indications that perhaps there were issues with the advertising. And uh, when, I, when we reviewed subsequent, uh, either Julie checked earlier or we checked after, changes had been made to uh, affect the advertisements so that they were set properly for the number of guests. The one comment I will make is, is that, for example, in one of the uh, applications, one of the uh, advertisements said six guests, with four bedrooms for a two bedroom house. And so the way the ordinance is set it's the advertisement for the number of guests not the number of bedrooms and so technically i think it was correct but i think that may be something when we look at our uh, information changes <laughs> to the ordinance that we might consider uh, suggesting that the number of bedrooms advertised uh, equal to the 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 septic and that's a conversation we've had about some other things right. um that was like a bad math problem it does and <laughs> advertising for for uh, and, and another example was one where again they advertised for uh 10 guests four bedroom home uh, but the pictures show 16 different beds um so it, it's not quite a high, keeping with the spirit of what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that's something we just need to improve on, on our, on how we state things going forward. Well, we can ask the people how they're going to advertise, what they're going to advertise and kind of hold them to that. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, is that right now, none of the applications technically are out of compliance. 
And yet, I think we, we still need to do some work to get better at what we're asking. Yes. So that's it. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Bill. So we have Horrigan, which was resubmitted, Osborne at 43 Juniper, Armstrong at 86 Eagle Mountain Road, Armstrong at 19 Ridge Road, uh, Malkinson at 25 1 East Field Road. Oh, that must be a condominium. Uh, Pappas, 37 Adams Road, Rosefort, uh, 183 through 187 Route 16. That must be something. And uh, Caldwell, Caldwell, sorry, at uh, 200 Tin Mile. Tin mine. Uh, all those applications are submitted, and they the applications were approved by the planning board. And I would now entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the eight short-term rental applications that are listed on the agenda that you just talked of. And I will second. Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? I vote yes. Dick Bennett? <laughs> yes. Okay, those applications are approved. As yeah, Bill said. Yeah. Are we going to go back to the Kudrick one now? Yeah, I think okay. we should. Julie, were you going to say something else or were you going to refer to that? Yeah, so Roquefort, that's just one. This 183 is the is their short term rental. 187 is their their home address. Oh, okay. so that's, oh. Just a typo. that's just a typo. There are only seven applications. Sorry about that. There are seven applications plus the one resubmission. Yes, yeah, correct. Horrible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Julie. So, um, on. Um, okay, Kudrick. back to Kudrick, yes. which is uh, a problem that we're having, who has been asked to submit an application and has not done so. So um, I, I guess we're going to ask our town attorney, Peter Malia, to uh, pursue that. Right, and so I will make a motion to authorize town council to bring a zoning enforcement lawsuit against the owner of the short term rental that has failed to file an application for a conditional use permit after being notified by the town to do so. And they have been notified uh, both in writing and verbally and have not responded. I will second that. I'll second that. Oh, I second it. <laughs> John, you second it. I second it. Yes. Don't take. Give me some credit for something. There. Nicely <laughs> done. Uh, Barbara, how do you vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? Yes. Dick Bennett, yes. And I think it should be noted that uh, he has four properties in Jackson mm -hmm. that were, and he is not. Uh, applying for a permit for any one of them. So it's a problem. Uh, it was also suggested that, uh, no, I think Barbara stepped forward and volunteered to be a point person for dealing with short-term rentals. Is that correct, Barbara? That is correct. I will be the liaison if you approve and vote me and I'll be the liaison between the short-term rental uh, emails, communication, the legal counsel, et cetera, so we can bring uh, topics to the select meetings in an organized format. And I would just say, uh, 
a lot of that may still come to the office. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be emailed to you, but right. you will get it. So uh, that information will get passed along. Okay, I would entertain a motion to have Barbara be our point person for short-term rentals. I will make a motion to appoint Barbara as our point person for short-term rentals. I will second that motion. Barbara, are you going to vote for yourself? I will. I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I'll vote for me. <laughs> John, I, vote? I vote yes. Dick Bennett, yes. Barbara, you're getting yourself into, I think, a lot of work. Thank you. Thank you very much. You didn't say that before I volunteered, did you? <laughs> no, no. I, I thought I'd summarize that. Left out. <laughs> All right. Then we have building permits. Uh, I'm just going to read through the uh, lot number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, permit 86, V10, lot 231, uh, new roof. Kevin Bennett, are you there yet? No. No, he's no. not. Uh, 87, lot 27B, oh, R09, lot 27B is a full kitchen. Um, 88 is V2, lot 10. Replace all the windows and French doors. Wow. 89 is V4, lot 20. Uh, septic repair and house repairs. Let's see, 90 is... R12, lot 36, uh, replace existing deck, and remodel baths. The 91 is mm. R31, lot 5, uh, mudroom in a garage. 92 has been void, voided. Uh, 93 is R9, lot 27B, uh, same one who was before, but he's putting in a new, uh, 16 kW backup generator. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Uh, 94 is V10, lot 131, uh, add a porch roof and new roofing. Uh, 95 is V6, lot 28A, install new windows and doors. Uh, 96 is V10, lot 36D, new single family cape with two car garage, three bedrooms, three and a half beds. All right. And uh, 97 is V1, 136, uh, new electrical panel at the tool shed. So we have 97 building permits this year through the first nine months, which puts us about on track with where we were last year, maybe even a few more. So Kevin's a busy man. And it seems like things are picking up this fall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. They're going to get assessed for that. Uh, let's see. I don't, um, no, we don't ask for our information. That's for everybody's information. We don't have to vote on that. Right. Could, uh, I, just, could I just step in and make another comment about short-term rentals before I forget? Um, Last meeting, we read into the minutes the letter that went out to all registered um, taxpayers or all taxpayers and property owners in Jackson. So 
um, I hope that everyone has gotten those and I'm sure we'll see an influx of short-term rental applications and Bill Terry is shaking his head yes, so I'm sure we already have. So um, that's a good thing. The other thing is that we have a formal complaint form now that is online and that will be the mechanism to file any complaints against short-term rentals. That is against the short-term rental registration process and any safety issues that are um, that are signed for on the application. That does not have to do with complaints for noise ordinance, which would go through the police department and be handled separately. So, just to clarify, there are two different um, two different stories here. One is the short-term rental registration process, and if there are complaints against the short-term rentals, and then if there are noise ordinance or other ordinance complaints, those would be going through the police department. I'm sure we will experience overlap and we will also communicate amongst each department to make sure that we're all informed of what's going on in town. But um, we do have the form up now and there is a link to it, so. And that form is also available at the town office if you don't pick it up. Correct. That is it. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, we're getting to the uh, upcoming meetings. Our next meeting is October 13th at 4 p.m. Now, are we going to discuss uh, a change in venue for that? I would love to have the meeting at the town office with, um, and this is my recommendation personally, but up for review. I would like to be at the town office. I would like to have um, spatial seating for Dick, John, Barb, six feet apart if you choose to, you know, if we all choose to be there. Julie and Julie would be there. Hank could be there to record. And then if we have any, uh, chair people or spokespeople from any of the department heads or committees or anything that want to be at that meeting, they could let us know ahead of time. So I think there's a maximum of 18 people that could be spatially uh, seated in the, in the room, conference room at the town office, but we would make it first available to anyone that has a reporting or an agenda item on the, uh, for that meeting. Okay, so as I understand it, the meeting would be the selectmen, uh, any department heads, and uh, Julie and Julie. If anybody else and has it, comments, it would also it would also have Zoom information for anyone right. that did not come to the building. Right. Okay. We'll try that out October thirteenth at 4 p.m. Our next meeting after that is October 27th at 4 p.m. And we'll just see how it worked out and where we'll go. Sounds great. And then there's a uh, Household Hazardous Waste Day, September 26th at the Conway Transfer Station from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And I'll be there for that. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Actually, John, I don't think they're taking volunteers this year. Do you, I, I believe they said because of the virus. Correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, but I think the pamphlet said that it was just a drive-through, no volunteers needed. Uh, yes, that's correct. Right. Great. I guess I won't be there. Except right. to drop off my stuff. Drop off right. your used masks. So then, are there any other uh, public comments? I have none. I have none. Anybody out there? Nobody else raising their hand. Okay, we're not going to go into a non-public. So I would happily take we'll a motion, motion to... Return. I will second that motion. Barbara, have to vote? I vote yes. John, how do you vote? 
Yes, didn't mean to cut you off there, Dick. <laughs> a little anxious there. Dick Bennett, I vote yes. Thanks, <laughs> everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very Take much. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Thanks, Joyce.